So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. Got a five-star review from The Real Deal, Karen Cooper. Karen Cooper said, Pat always talks on this podcast about providing real actionable information, and it's true. Pat Hyben interviews Real Estate Rockstars is valuable for all agents whether newer in the business or a 16 year plus year veteran like myself. There are few podcasts that I look forward to each week and listen to every episode. This is definitely one of them. Keep up the great work. Keep the comments coming guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one star review if you want or a five star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, Subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Okay, Rockstar Nation, we have a great uh, guest today coming from sunny Florida. Catherine Scarum is on the line and uh, she has made it her life mission to make sure agents don't fail. I think there's a lot of people whose life missions, mine probably being one, that to make sure agents succeed, but she's taking another route and she's making, she's fired up about the fact that uh, so many agents fell out of this business so early in life. And we're going to dig deep, deep, deep down into why this is happening. So uh, before we get into that, uh, Catherine, uh, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Thank you so much, Pat. This is a real pleasure. Appreciate the moment. Hey, uh, why don't you give everybody a little rundown on who you are, Catherine, so they can get to know you better. Okay. I'm a broker in Jupiter, Florida. Um, I have a small independent brokerage, Island Bridge Realty. I have 14 agents. I have authored two books, one for to-be agents as well as uh, one for existing agents. And I also coach. So it's really all about strengthening our agents out there. I think the public needs it. That's awesome. And how long have you been in the business? Uh, 2011. I came down here from Chicago and had to reinvent myself. I had been an environmental consulting business and um, things had to change. So now I'm in. Here. Wow. And, and, and when you started out, like, did you start out as a traditional agent uh, buying and selling yourself or did you just start out and say, you know what, I'm going to open up a brokerage? You know what? I started out as an agent. I never thought of doing anything different until I started getting really, really frustrated and figured out I couldn't get answers and the training I wanted wasn't there. And I was then damned and determined to become a broker and to be able to help people the way I, the way I wanted to be helped. So, it, okay. you know, that experience really, really changed my trajectory and I very quickly wanted to broker. All right. So let's touch on um, the failure rate. What is the failure rate? of licensees, would you say? I would say depending on the shape of the market, right? Easier times, they hang out a little longer, but somewhere between 75 and 87% fail within the first five years. Okay, so 75 and 87, and, and would you say that's pretty much worldwide, do you think? I mean, like US, Canada, uh, these stats are coming North America or? or Definitely America. I'm not too in touch with what's happening in other areas. They have very different ways of going about things, but I can tell you that's what's happening here. And, um, you know, I always think that, uh, you know, what happens obviously is the, the juice doesn't become worth the squeeze, meaning people, people, you know, get in and they don't sell anything or they, they come in fired up and then they fizzle out and then they don't want to pay the fees anymore. <laughs> um, you know, which pressures them to quit. And I think that if they didn't have to pay all the dues and, and the upkeep for their license, they'd probably keep it forever and it would make the numbers um, different. So, but, but that being said, what, so what's going on? Why, why is this happening? So, you know, it's kind of like, well, like life insurance or some of these other trades. I mean, people will tell you up front or not tell you up front, hey, 
you know, um, you know, you have a three out of four chance of not being in business in five years, right? Or even more, three and a half out of four chance of not being in business in five years. Um, yet they still move forward and think they're going to make it. So tell me where the disconnect is and what we should be doing about it. Okay. I think, well, myself included, I think a lot of people get into this business and don't know what it's about. So when they hear these statistics, they think, oh, but I can do it because what they think they can do is actually not what our business is. So expectations are really off in the beginning. I don't think Bravo TV is helping us in any way either, by the way. I've yet to have a deal that happens, you know, over a martini and everybody hugs and kisses at the end. But I'd love to <laughs> pour me a martini, Pat, let's do this. But, you know, it's just not how it is. Um, I think there's three things that we can be doing uh, definitely to help uh, these agents hang out longer. But first, we need to kind of break down what these statistics are. So if 75 to 85% of agents are failing in the first five years, and I mean, work with me here a minute, most agents are independent contractors, agreed? Independent contractors Pretty much are- all, Well, no, I mean, there are companies well, now that- are, yeah, yeah, but so for the most part, yes. For the most part, let's roll with that kind 90 some percent, absolutely, yeah. That's, that's a big number. So 90 some percent of them are independent contractors. Those independent contractors are, you know, therefore running their own small businesses. Okay. But the small business failure rate is only 49% in the first five years. So there's this huge discrepancy. Think about that. That's like 26 to 38% if I'm doing my math on the fly here. I know. Um, and, the, and the funny thing is, is there's so much more pressure with a small business. Like, like people get loans and they take liabilities out and sign leases and, and, you know, borrow um, to open small businesses where agents, you know, really the, the, their, their uh, skin in the game is a thousand bucks. So, so what's happening there? Is it, is it because of that? Because it, because they don't have anything to lose. So they just say, screw it. That's part of it, don't you think? There isn't enough being vetted in this pre-license stage. How are we choosing our agents? You know, is it that high of a bar? It's, it's just not. But even with the small business, they're winging it, right? They're making it up as they go. Um, our agents are supposed to walk into these brokerages and have mentorship and training available to them. In essence, they should have much higher success rates than the small businesses, right? So, uh, it, listen, it's broken. Yeah, you would think because, you know, basically you got to sell one house to, to probably want to keep your license, right? You sell one or two houses a year and you're like, eh, you know, I made eight grand. I, I, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll keep my license. Yeah, they're, they're in the positive right away, right? It's pretty easy to do. Unfortunately, it's not getting done, I guess, or they'd still be here. So, I think a big focus is on this pre-licensure. If you look at all the different states, it's all over the board. I, of course, don't have the power to change how the states decide to educate our agents or what they require for um, licensing. But if you want to start the battle cry with me, I'm, I'm there with you. I need a hobby. Um, <laughs> You've already started. So, what, uh, so let's talk about the pre-licensing. What, what do you think it should be? What, you know, what is the average pre-licensing, right? It's, it's was it 90 hours now? And, you know. Yeah, some as low as 40. Texas is putting in 180 to 210, it looks like. Whoa. So Texas is the highest state, you think, at 210 hours Texas required? Colorado, from what I've been able Texas to. and Colorado. Two, so let me think about this. 210 hours is, so 40 hours in a week, right? So that would be five weeks. Five weeks of training. Like if you took off work to get your license, you'd have to go through five weeks. I, I had somebody recently tell me in a lot of states, it's like 10 times as harder 10 times harder to uh, get your license to cut hair than it is to get your license to sell real estate. I can give you that stat. In oh, please Florida, do, yeah. We have 63 hours we have to sit. A cosmetologist has to sit 1,200 hours. Okay, let, let this, let's get this straight. <laughs> cosmetologist, someone who's cutting hair on a head, um, 1,200, 1,200. And that includes practical 
right? They have to actually cut a certain number of heads. They're actually touching clients. Think about it, right? And their continuing education hours are 16 every two years. Ours is 14. So even to keep your license, you have to do a little more work to be a cosmetologist. So, so what do you do about that? Like, I mean, so then, then you get, and then tell me the, the big picture of this, right? Because then the, then the agents come in, they're idiots. We get a bad name. You know, tell me the whole big picture here. The big picture is, and, and I think Texas is doing it a little better. I have a coaching client out in Texas, and she shared with me that they actually have contract coursework in their pre-license work. Now, we don't have that, and I can't speak for every state. What, what does that mean, contract coursework? Like we're actually touching the true state forms, the true contracts, um, and working through examples, et cetera. An agent in Florida doesn't see or touch a contract until they're licensed. I can tell you agents been in the business decades that have no idea what any of the paragraphs mean in a contract. But yet ask their clients to sign. How terrifying is that? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Could you sign what I don't understand? That'd be great. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I, listen, what they're currently teaching, I'm not saying that should go away. I'm saying we should add applicable coursework to it. You know, let these agents walk out and have something of value, something that they can apply, something to make them feel somewhat competent. Right. Why should you start a career feeling absolutely at a loss? It, it doesn't make any sense. That's the whole point of... I, I think, so what the states are thinking is that the brokerages are going to sit there and, and tell them what 43B means and how to, you know, what they should X out and what they shouldn't X out and blah, 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 right? I mean, isn't that the thought process for most states? And believe me, I think that's, you know, one of my three points. So the first is we need better pre licensure coursework. If we want to jump to three, I'm game. The brokers need to be pressured to do a better job of getting mentoring for these agents, for getting proper training. And listen, marketing's great, but it's not training. I think it's going the other way. I think uh, what's happening is, you know, when you, and, and you start having a lot of these cloud-based companies and you have, um, uh, you know, flat fee companies and things like that. And you're just going to tend to get brokers that are just a piece of paper. You know what I mean? A certificate, right? That they're like, hey, you're on your own. And, uh, you know, if you sell a house, you pay me a flat fee of 500 bucks or, or what have you. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the education and the scrutiny and the going through, say, contracts and any of that stuff is just happening less and less, not more and more. It's going the other way. But so is the trust of the public. If only 67, you know, 67 percent of the public don't trust us and we're in a trust and business relationship business, you know, we need to fix this. We're failing the agents. The agents are failing the public. Thus, we are failing our industry. And if we want this industry to be around, which I think we're all, you know, desperately wanting, uh, we need to really get down to what's broken. I think, and I think I'm quoting your book here, forgive me if I'm wrong, but, you know, it's not the people, it's the system. So we need to fix this system of how agents are brought to competency. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox. And it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient. And the thing is, it's absolutely free. All you gotta do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 
nine nine nine. That's toolbox four 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 nine nine nine. Do it now. Yeah, yeah. It was actually Howard Britton that taught me that. Uh, my mentor. He said, he said, don't focus on the people. Focus on the system. So if something goes wrong, you don't get mad at your staff. You know, never get mad at your staff. Get mad at the system you created. You know, for either hiring or the system you created for what they do, so they don't, you know, miss something or whatever. So absolutely. So you get mad at the real estate system, but then let's talk about that. What is the real estate system? What, who, who is the real estate system? Let's find them, Pat. We can do this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> is it NAR, National Association of Realtors? I mean, because that's an optional. Thing. Well, I'll tell you what maybe you know, the sexiest thing I've heard in a very long time is when NAR commissioned that 2017 danger report and stood behind the finding that, quote, the number one risk to agents is agents. They stated, they paid for this commission and published it. They stated that it is part-time, untrained, unethical, incompetent agents and their knowledge gap that is threatening the credibility of our industry. Mind blown. Thank you, NAR. I've never loved them more. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but what can you do about it, right? Like, like um, it's so, I'm trying to think of another industry where this would be similar um, or this would actually be worse. I hope there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I mean, I can tell you how I'm, I'm personally in my small little way trying to fix it. Um, and... Uh, you know, that starts with this teeny little book I wrote. It's all of 50 pages. So, you know, nobody comment that it's too short. I'm telling you it's short. That was its purpose. Um, and it is called Before You Are Licensed. It's 13- Before You're Licensed. This is your bestseller, right? This is the one that's, that it's- sells the most. And you basically break it down into, um, you know, you, it, it basically talks about everything and anything you need to do before you're licensed so that when so you hit the ground running when the gun shoots off in the horse race right so that you're so what is the current system so we get licensed and then we go and we hunker down in our new brokerage we dress real nice for the first week because we think that that's what agents do right (laughs) i used to call it all dressed up nowhere to go exactly (laughs) you know one of the reasons i you know when i was an agent i i I always tended to want it to be private, like off to my own, because there were people that were all dressed up, nowhere to go. There was one guy in particular, um, and I used to call him all dressed up, nowhere to go, behind his back, of course. Um, but, you know, I'd walk in the office, and he would just start drilling me with hypotheticals. What if? What if? What would you do in this situation? What, but this, these weren't real-life stories of his. They, these weren't real-life situations. He was just curious, Right. But I could never get any work done because all dressed up, nowhere to go, kept stopping me and asking me all these questions. So then I developed an affinity for like private offices and stuff. And about halfway through my career, I just said to any brokers I was with that, you know, I was going to work outside of the office as much as possible to avoid people like him. So, um, so everybody comes in like a lion. We know that. And, that. and that's how most goals are. Most people set goals and they just come in full force, right? It's like signing up for a gym membership first 10 days, man, you're, you're rocking and rolling. But after that, you know, you drop off the Zippo. Yeah. They're waiting for their BMW to be delivered. Right. I mean, they're an agent now. Everybody wants a free lunch nowadays, right? I'm telling you. So, you know, they get in there and, and those with the best intentions very quickly are fed a ton of, you know, marketing um, information. Um, and those are, you know, the classes, so to speak. And this isn't true of every brokerage. Please, you know, there are some excellent brokerages out there. We just need to start copying what they're doing. Well, you know, I, I think the key is, right, um, our, bro- our, our brokerage is requiring, you know, this training. Our, bro- like our brokerage is like saying, okay, here's the deal. You know, you're a new agent. You have to do this. I'll tell you what I've learned is I, like um, when I created Rebus University and started making these courses for agents, um, I have several teams and small brokerages now that are requiring certain courses completed before uh, the agent 
actually hits the street. I'll give you an example. Jeff Quinton out in uh, Ocean City, New Jersey, requires all of his new agents to finish the listing appointment course, uh, which is eight agents doing their listing appointment before they do a single listing appointment. Every month we get a new student from Jeff's team uh, that's brand new. So he says, look, you got to bring me a certificate that says you've passed the CLA course before you can take a listing. And if you get a listing lead, well, then you got to give it to somebody else. And I think what's happening is, you know, what you're saying is agent uh, brokerages really aren't doing that. They're really not doing like Jeff does and saying, hey, listen, before you actually shake a hand of someone and says and say, let's go look at a house, you have to complete this course on understanding the contract, on, um, you know, what to say and what not to say, right? The only thing they need to do now is know how to open a lockbox. Yeah, listen, he, he cares and he takes his broker duties seriously and he's saying, I don't want my agents practicing slash praying on the public kudos, right? And that's how it should be. Unfortunately, sometimes they're just getting, you know, the shiny, um, exciting information being provided to them. They're not having to cut their teeth. Um, and, and to back up just a bit, I do understand that some brokerages are terrified of the agents not making money very quickly, because then they start experiencing financial pressures, they get in a bad mindset, right? And they feel if these guys don't close a deal in three months, I'm going to lose them. So they're all about just get out there, just figure it out as you go, skin to your pants, what see to your pants, whatever they call it. See if they throw them against the wall, see if they stick. All of these horrible expressions we hear in this industry. Right. And during that time, though, the other thing they're telling these agents is, okay, congratulations, you got your license. Now you have to do all of this non-income producing activity. So I'm going to roll my eyes here for those viewers who can't see me, but we'll let's all roll our eyes together. Create your business card, create your tagline, get your headshot, get another headshot because you didn't like your first headshot. Um, organize your address, book into spheres, you know it. And the agents who know that they aren't getting meaty, tangible, applicable information and education, they'll drag those non-income producing activities out because the fear is mounting. The fear of failure, the fear of success, and the fear of maintaining success builds up because they're using these non-income producing activities as a crutch to be able to hide from the public where if we had had them knock that all out, none of those activities require a license pad. You're not allowed to hand out your business card. You're not allowed to direct people to the website um, that you've built, but you can keep it private until you have your license. You get my point. Yeah, so you're saying that the broker should be saying to all... You froze. I don't know if I froze on your... All their people, listen, don't step foot in the... You've done A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which, is, which are non-dollar um, non productive activities, right? Not things that are not necessarily going to make you money today. Exactly. When they're doing interviews with agents that are in their licensing course, you know, hand them a list of the things that they can be doing right now before they join the brokerage. Get it out of the way, then get some real meaty information into them so they can feel competent. And then they're ready to be with the public. Um, my experience, you know, all of my trials and tribulations when I started, because I came from a very, very structured, highly monitored um, industry, right? So the environmental consulting world, um, if you're, you know, you're doing triplicate reports to the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency. Um, you're recalculating equipment, recalibrating equipment if you're off by so many parts per million. It's, it's very, very specific and, and the oversight is intense. And then I walked into the wild, wild west of real estate and couldn't find answers for the life of me. Um, it was it was like saddening. It was supposed to be a really exciting time, right? I'm starting this new career. It wasn't. It was terrifying. Um, and so I kind of quickly figured out I was on my own. And I just figured I got to go to the source. I'm supposed to be the generalist in a sea of specialists to get this transaction to closing, right? So I just befriended every real estate attorney, every home inspector, every pest inspector, every insurance broker. You see where I'm going here. 
And yeah, I yeah, right, right. Directly from the learned. Source. I learned. I mean, and, I'm shocked actually, and this is a good thing. I'm shocked how many people listening listen to real estate rock stars that are new or unlicensed agents um, wanting to get in the business or taking the class. I mean, I get we get comments daily on Facebook and on our real estate rock stars page on Facebook, and just me personally, and just emails sent to our our website, whatever. Every day, and uh, I would say over half of them are, are new agents, um, agents that aren't even licensed yet, uh, things like that. So I think it is going in, in the right direction because the information is out there. It used to be the brokers hoarded that information, right? It used to be you couldn't go to the library and get a book like yours on the 50 things to do before you get licensed. You couldn't get my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures you know, um, before because the broker had all that training material. So there is some of that going on. But at the same time, I think that your point is that the broker should be making it much more forceful like Jeff Quinton does and says, look, you're not going to embarrass me, right? Um, you need to get this, you need to show up not only with a lockbox key, but with some knowledge and confidence in your head. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that second book I wrote um, was a collaborative effort uh, with, you know, two real estate attorneys, a mortgage broker, an insurance agent, um, and a home inspector, because they were frustrated dealing with the agents on their deals. They felt that they were cleaning up messes or over-educating agents and that they just didn't have the right foundation um, that they needed. And now a word about Rebus University, the future of real estate training from Las Vegas, Nevada, Trish Williams. How many listings are you taking every month now? Last month I took nine listings. So you took more listings last month than you did all last year. Yes, I did. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You need to do the course. Even if you're already a listing agent, you need to... You need to do this. You need to see what all the all, all the big guys are doing, what they're what, what they're out there doing, what information is there. You never can know too much, and the the information is completely valuable. It's more more than I've you know I, I've seen anywhere in, in all the different training courses, and and I've, I've gone through quite a bit of different training courses. It's um, it's more valuable than um, than any of those that I've seen because it actually shows you the appointment and breaks it down, down to the call, down to the walk, down to the close. And it's not just one person and their, their way of doing it. There's eight different people. You see all this variation and you can see what works for you. If you want the listing success that Trish Williams has had, just type in the coupon code CLA50 on rebusuniversity.com. That's R-E-B-U-S university.com for Get this, 50% off the Certified Listing Agent course. That's CLA 50. You won't regret it. So title attorneys were frustrated because agents didn't know what the hell a settlement sheet was or, or right, didn't, didn't understand anything. So, and you got some good press with from National Association of Realtors, NAR, on that, right? Yeah, they called us the dream team which was so charming, I have to say. Yeah, they did a lovely book review for us. Um, but, you know, we did it. It was a passion project. And I want, you know, every agent that is looking for this information, just like you do, right? Your Rebus University is out there for those agents that are seeking it out. I should have had that information on day one, point blank. Somebody should have handed me that information. Because I didn't get it, you know, I've now created it for others. And, um, I hope it helps. And I hope that brokerages, listen, if they don't have enough time or they don't have enough money to do certain training or mentorship or get the agents coaching you know, from the beginning so their mindset is you know, proper and, and structured and they learn to work within systems, I get that. But then direct them to these resources or these materials that you've already vetted as being of value. You know, if the brokers would just do that, hey, I find this valuable, I think you should 
you know, go for this or go look at this, as opposed to, hey, we have affiliated relationship with these guys and they're paying us, to, you know, X number of dollars. We think they're great. You know, think about it. That's all I'm asking. I think most agents, and I, and I know in my career, um, you know, my biggest lessons I learned by getting my head kicked in, right? By like losing a deal, losing a commission. Those are the lessons that sunk in the hardest. You know, I was just the type of guy that just, you know, sat in a corner and was, did what I was told. And then I would just get my butt beat, you know, out on the street by buyers and sellers. I think that um, um, that's a long journey in that. And that's why back in the day, you know, and, uh, you know, when, when I was hiring brokers, I would say, don't expect a commission for six months. I, I think that people are afraid to say that now, you know, like a broker wouldn't say that because the, the, everybody wants to go from zero to hero nowadays. Yeah. Like and I don't, I don't sit, this will probably upset some people, but I don't sit in my brokerage counting production on my agents. I, I count clean contract work and I count um, great testimonials from clients that's what's so important to me. When they send me a contract, and this is just like the nerd in me, but when they send me this contract that's beautifully done and you know they've done everything they can to make sure those contingencies are right for that individual client, my heart sings so much more than seeing that they hit a certain number, so much more. And you know that's called being long-sighted. I'm very long-sighted. And I don't need a ton of warm bodies in my brokerage. I need ethical, good people that are committed to learning our industry, um, sharing with one another so they can learn exponentially. Um, you know, this keeping to the chest, which again, you, you, you definitely dig information out of people and understand the importance of sharing knowledge. You know, there's no need to relearn something. Somebody's already learned the hard way. Oh yeah, I, I I mean that's my whole life. I've I've, well, I wouldn't say I say in the beginning I got my head kicked in, but then I realized that, you know, I I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. I can just learn from someone else who got their head kicked in and say, wow, you know, what a mistake they made. I'll make sure I won't do that again or won't do that like they did it. Right, and if the numbers and and this statistic I don't have very cleanly, but you know, what's the average number? You probably know this of deals an agent does in the U.S. a year. Do you know that offhand? I, I don't know it. I mean, there's cliches that, you know, say six, right? Okay. There's other ones that say eight. It, oh. it depends. You could Google it and um, it depends on the year, right? The NAR, but it's somewhere between five and 10, definitely. Let's give them 12. I, I'm, yeah. I'm generous today. Let's give them 12. If you're only as good as the number of deals you've done, <laughs> think about it. <laughs> it's pretty terrifying. We have to learn exponentially from others because those 12 deals aren't going to tell us everything we need to know by any means. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so let's talk about your books. You, you've made a big contribution to the real estate industry at large. You, you keep putting out uh, great books for people um, to just be so much more solid when they get out there with buyers and sellers. What, how many have you written? Two. 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 Okay. What are there? And, and, and you're getting, you have a launch coming up. Well, first of all, what are the two books? Okay. The first book for to be agents is called before you are licensed 13 steps to jumpstart your real estate career. And the second book, the collaborative you know, Bible of real estate, so to speak is um, called dear real estate agent. There are answers. And that's the one you did with the title company attorneys and the uh, home inspector. Attorney, home inspector, insurance agent, and um, mortgage broker. That's yeah. awesome. And that's the one you're giving your free gift. You're taking your part of that, right? And you're giving it as your free gift for coming on the show, right? Correct. So your viewers get 90 pages, the first 90 pages of the book. Guys, read this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on hybendigital.com backslash launch. And uh, Catherine will explain why I'm using the word launch. But uh, hybendigital.com backslash launch. Uh, everybody spells Catherine uh, different than her last name and everything. I'm going to make it easy for you. Um, and of course, the 90 pages will be on the toolbox as well, which is on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444 999. 
as well as all of Catherine's information. If you want to reach out there and say thanks for coming on and thanks for your contribution to the real estate industry, uh, any further discussion, basically everything we talked about today, there'll be links on there. I'm also going to put uh, a link to her new launch. Tell me about that. Um, well, I, I use launch constantly because I'm always thinking about those new agents getting started. Um, I have also uh, begun um, an online coaching presence. Um, I was doing it very um, individually uh, via phone, Skype, that sort of thing to these agents or to be agents that were reaching out to me after reading this before your launch book. And um, the demand just kind of made me think harder and um, create what I think is a really valuable system for new agents, agents that need a refresh and existing agents that just kind of want to ramp up a little bit. So that's called Agent Strong. And um, I'm really excited about that. It's just another way I can help other agents. You know, I, I keep a small, tight office, but through books and through coaching, I can have a much farther reach and hopefully be able to help more. That's awesome. So, guys, I'm going to put a link to that, too, to Agent Strong uh, on hybendigital.com backslash launch. Catherine, thanks so much. Best of luck to you in Jupiter. And I hope that if I'm ever out that way, we can get together and break some bread. We'll have a mojito, Pat. We're in Florida. Even better. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show and i'd love to see you there and it's free people ask me all the time where am i on social media i'm real easy to find just type in my name my ig is i am pat hyben it is blowing up on instagram adding tons of subscribers and i'm on there probably twice a day so definitely follow me on instagram as well as everywhere else thanks again for listening and keep rocking